Let's talk about DJ controllers, DJ software, your backup system, and a laptop stand. In the previous video, we talked about what to buy first, your laptop, what music management software to get, and where to get your music, and how to find good playlists to work off when DJing. Now in this video, we're starting to put the system together, getting you something that you can actually play with a little bit. Now, as the series progresses, you'll see that I tend to steer you away from the premium high-end equipment and steer you more towards the, the mid-range, middle-of-the-road equipment. Because for the most part, you don't have to spend a lot of money on DJ equipment to get the job done and to do it well. Uh, premium equipment has its perks. It looks really nice. But, you know, we're here to start a profitable DJ company from scratch. But with that being said, the DJ controller is going to be the one exception. Because for the most part, it's, it's the tool of your trade. You know, a carpenter has his hammer, a doctor has his scalpel, and a DJ has his controller. And, you know, I kind of went back and forth a little bit when I was thinking about making this video. Because, you know, I, I want you to be profitable as soon as you possibly can. So that makes me want to send you to the middle of the road equipment, but my experience tells me a different story. And just, just to give you a quick little backstory, when, when I first started Pirate Radio Productions, uh, computer DJing was not yet a thing. You know, it wasn't mainstream anyways. There was some software out there, but it hadn't really caught on. Most people are still DJing with uh, CDs, and that was where I instantly went to was uh, was CD players. And so I went out and I bought a two CD player Newmark kit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, not even, you know, no, no turntables on top or anything, just basic, cheap, pop up the door, drop your CDs in, two channel mixer, came with a case and everything. And I want to think it was around maybe $300 right around there. And, you know, I, I bought this entire system for about 2500 bucks. And my first gig, I actually just rented out a community center and I was going to throw a teen dance and just, I put up posters, was going to try to sell tickets, five, you know, five bucks at the door to get in. I had done that in the past when I worked for another DJ company and it turned out quite well. So I thought, just to get back into it, that's what I was going to do this time around. And that's how Pirate Radio Productions got its name. I was going to wind up throwing some of my own parties. Well, anyways, um, I burnt my four CDs, had my set list ready to go for that night. I lived in a very small apartment, so I had not set everything up. I hadn't really tested anything. I DJed in the past, so I wasn't too worried about it. But I got to my gig, dropped my CDs in for sound check and found that the Newmark CD players I got did not read the burnt CDs that I had burnt. You know, luckily that day I had my laptop with as well and I wound up just doing the show using Windows Media Player. But, you know, I ended up having to sell that that combo I bought. You know, and I lost probably $75, maybe 100 on the sale of it. And my dance flopped, by the way, so I decided, you know, I'm not going to throw any parties, I'm just going to try to do some bar dances. So, being as I was looking for new CD players, I thought, I'm going to get ones that can read CDGs. So I bought this Gemini, like, all-in-one thing with two trays and a, and a mixer on top. And I thought, cool, all-in-one system, ready to go. I bought the Chartbuster Essential disc series, uh, well, just volume one at that point in time, so I was just getting into it. And uh, went out and did my first bar dance. And I don't remember why, but for some reason that Gemini just was not working. I don't remember if the CDs skipped or if for some reason the karaoke stuff just wasn't working quite right. But there was some reason I, I was like, no, not using this either. I ended up selling that and lost another 7500 bucks on it. And I finally did some research on, on software and then I came across Virtual DJ and I bought it at version 5, I believe, with a little Newmark Total Control Mixer. Really cheap. 
Didn't even have a sound card in the controller. I had to get the Newmark DJIO, and to run that to my speakers, I used RCA to quarter inch, which isn't a pro audio output. So even if when I had my speakers just maxed out all the way, and my controller up full volume, I couldn't couldn't even get the speakers to limit. Like it was just just not enough volume, not enough output signal. It wasn't a professional grade system. So I used that for a while, but that really didn't work very well. So then I upgraded to a cheaper Hercules controller. And mind you, at this time, I had quit my full-time job and had started doing this full-time. So I, I, had, I, couldn't, I couldn't spend you know, never-ending amounts of money on DJ gear. I had to remain profitable so I could pay my bills and try to upgrade my equipment. So I couldn't go super high-end and I'd already lost a lot of money on controllers so I got this Hercules controller and it worked okay. But touch-sensitive platters were starting to come out and this didn't have it and it just I wanted two mic inputs and this didn't have it. So I wanted to upgrade yet again and then I finally said to myself, you know what, I've spent so much money on these other controllers, I wound up getting a 19 inch rack mount, I think it's like a Denon DNHC 4500 maybe with a DNX500 mixer. And I liked how those two work together because you could use an eighth inch cable and link the mixer to the controller so that you'd get cross fader support in Virtual DJ. And I used that for a while but still, you know, I was working with little platters like this. I wanted I wanted something better to mix on, so then I wound up getting the Virtual DJ VMS 4.1, and that one was pretty good. I, I really I, I used that for quite a few years. I had no complaints on it. You know, standard $400 controller, but not really high end. Still small platters, and you know, just just from all of that buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling constantly. Yeah, I wasted so much money doing all that, I could have just bought the controller. Well, I couldn't because it wasn't out at the time. But, you know, when you look at all the money you spend over the years buying stuff that you just instantly want to upgrade and upgrade and upgrade, and losing the money off your initial investment, you waste a lot of money. So, I actually broke down on a piece of paper. If I was going to, if I was going to tell you to go middle of the road in this video, you'd spend $1,445.99. Going the premium option that I'm going to tell you to go, it's $2,097. So it is, what about $650 more? But at the end of the day, you're going to get a controller that you could use for the next five years and be happy with it. And that's, that's one of the things with this. Like some of the other gear, I don't mind if you change it or upgrade it. But with the controller, it's different. You're like, it's like you're a musician and that's your instrument. You get used to it. You get used to how the software works that you're using and you get used to your controller. And, you know, after you're using it, you know, weekend after weekend, month after month, you get to the point where you're not even thinking like where the loop buttons are. You just, you just go for them and you start hitting the hot cues and you just know where everything is instinctively. And if you're constantly swapping controllers, you lose that because it's always like, oh, it was here on the last controller, where is it here? And I've been kind of going through that because I've been upgrading our controllers and trying to figure out new software myself because I didn't like the latest upgrade of the old software we use. So I'm actually going to tell you my recommendation is what I currently use now. And that might be a little, little biased maybe, but I've used a lot of different controllers. I've bought almost every software out there on the market and this is what I'm personally happy with and of course these videos are are my opinion and uh, that's what I'm sticking with so DJ controller wise I'm going a little expensive on this one and I am gonna say Pioneer XDJ RX 2 now I actually own the XDJ RX the original one and I don't use it so much as a standalone controller I, I mostly use it with record box DJ so that's why I haven't upgraded yet I would like to upgrade but I just don't think there's enough of a change yet for me to upgrade eventually I probably will but 
For now, I'm sticking with what I've got because I'm kind of used to it. But, you know, that controller is $16.99. And my middle of the road option that I was going to tell you to do was going to be the Denon MC6000 Mark II. And that's a $699 controller. So, you know, you might think, okay, that's $1,000 less. Why don't I just go with that? Well, let me tell you why. So if you go with the MC6000, you got to buy a case, which you got to buy a case with the Pioneer as well. Case for the MC6000 is $199. You got to get a backup system. iPad Mini uh, Gen 4 um, is $399. You got to buy a DJ Pro for the iPad for backup DJ software. That's $19.99. Plus, that controller comes with Serato Intro. So you got to buy the full version of Serato, which is $129. Well, now you're up to $1,445.99. With the XDJ RX2, you spend the $1,699, you spend $259 on the case, you do have to buy a laptop stand, which you could go cheap here, uh, but I'm not going to recommend going cheap on the laptop stand. I've had some cheap ones. They don't store well. They get bent. And, you know, I've went through quite a few of them. So I've got one that I'm going to link in the description. I'll put a link to all of this in the description. But there is a really nice laptop stand I recommend getting. It's $139.99. But I am quite positive the thing is so heavy duty it will last you forever. And, you know, and then that's what we want to do. You know, we want to buy good equipment that's going to last. Not something that we're going to have to replace in six months. Which is what I did when I started this company. So, total comes to $2,097.99, and the reason I do not have an iPad on the list for the Pioneer is the XDJRX is a standalone controller. Uh, you put music on two thumb drives, pop it in there, and, and you're good to go. Oh, I should have put uh, pricing for thumb drives on there, but realistically, a 32 gig thumb drive, 20 bucks. And you really only need one, you don't need two. I have two in mind, just one for backup thumb drive, just in case for some reason the data gets corrupted on another one. But you know, tack on 20 bucks for a little little mini thumb drive. Don't get the long big one, get the, get the short little tiny ones where you plug it in and you can just leave it in there, you don't have to take it out. But because it's a standalone controller, that is your backup system. You don't need to buy an iPad because if, you're, if your laptop goes down, you've got your essential music on your thumb drive and you can just use the controller. Now, if the controller goes down, you've still got your laptop, headphone to RCA or headphone to headphone, headphone to XLR, right direct into a speaker, and you're good to go. So you don't need to have the iPad as, as an option. And say, you know, you're doing a ceremony or something, you can still have your laptop over doing the ceremony, come back, you've got your XDJRX ready to go, and you can, you know, eventually plug your laptop into it, but you're ready to go instantly because music is with the controller. So that's, that's why I went with the XDJRX, and that's why I'm recommending it. Now, with that being said, oh, and also, I should say, with the XDJRX, it comes with, Rekordbox DJ, a license key for it, so you do not have to buy additional software. You get the full version of Rekordbox DJ. And I actually personally really like Rekordbox DJ. I think it works well. I think it's very stable. I've never had a crash on me. Um, it does have video options. It's got a uh, built-in lighting option, DMX lighting control inside of it. I haven't actually used that, but I'm planning on buying the interface really soon to see how that works out. Because I, uh, I think it would be nice to have DMX control through the software that's kind of analyzed with the music. But, um, you know, with, uh, with that being said, controller and DJ software, you know, everything, it, it's, it's personal preference. And this, this is probably one of the videos where I'm going to get 50-50 thumbs up and thumbs down because it is personal preference. Some people love Serato. Some people love Virtual DJ. Some people love PC DJ. Some people like Rekordbox. You know, DJs out, some people like to just DJ with vinyl. You know, I've got a DJ that does gigs for me that 
you know, I sent him to a wedding dance. I gave him the controller and the laptop. He brought his two turntables, his vinyl collection, his mixer, piped it into the other one, and did half the dance with his vinyl because that's what he likes to do. So this is definitely a tough video because controllers and software are very much personal preference. If you don't like Rekordbox, if you don't like the XDJRX, don't stick with what I'm telling you to do. But I do think it's a nice controller, it's good solid software, and it's a built-in backup system when you do that. You don't have to worry about bringing extra gear for a backup system. But if you want to get a different controller, go ahead and get a different controller. If there's something you like, definitely get it. This, this is going to be the one video that is completely open. I'm, I'm not going to tell you, you, you know, you have to get this if you, if you want to start a profitable DJ company. That's not what this video is about. There's a reason I recommend the XDJRX, but you don't have to get it. Just know that if you go a different route with a different controller, try to get one with two mic inputs. Um, try to get one that either has a separate aux in, um, or a switchable RCA input, some, something so where you could plug your iPad headphone to RCA into the controller. And with the MC6000, you do have four, it's a four channel mixer, so you can run the iPad on one. Um, just know that if you go a different route that's not a standalone controller, you need to budget for an iPad. And I do recommend an iPad over Android. I've had some Android tablets in the you know, I think, I think on the Android tab, we, we use Android tablets for backup right now. I'm not going to lie because they are cheap. I went out and bought like half a dozen of them for backup and just none of them work well. Uh, I use iSyncer to sync my iTunes database and the playlists never, like they sync, but they don't read. Like I'll load it up and it says the, the list is empty and it's just, it's, it's a pain in the ass. It does not work right. You know, if somebody knows a really good way to make an Android tablet work with DJ software, let me know because I haven't figured it out and I have three different programs on there and none of them sync my iTunes system. Even though I use an iTunes syncing software, the playlists don't sync properly. The music's there, but the playlists don't sync properly and it, without having the playlists, you know, just having 20,000 songs on an iPad, it's, it's tough to sift through. You know, the playlists are really something that's needed. So that's why I'm telling you, Go iPad, it syncs with iTunes, which is your mu music management software. It's just going to work better and you don't have to worry about it. DJ Pro is great on the iPad. Um, I think that's about all I have to say in this video. This video is very subjective to what you're looking for. You know, find, find a controller that does work good for you. I am recommending the XDJ RX2 doesn't mean you have to get it. This, this is going to be the video where you can go premium if you want. I'm not telling you to go out and spend $10,000 on a Pioneer, you know, Nexus 2 CD player and a really expensive mixer combo. I'm not telling you to do that. The XDJ RX is probably the most expensive you'd want to go. But if you want to get the Serato version of, you know, a Pioneer controller, go ahead and do it. You know, if you want to get something and use Virtual DJ, go ahead and do it. The only softwares that I'm really not going to recommend are if you're using a PC like I told you to in the previous video, uh, DJ Pro for the PC is very buggy and they do not fix it. I have, I have owned it for, I don't know, probably since it came out and I don't think they have patched a single bug in that software. And at one point I was going to switch over to using that because it does, we do own some Denon MC6000s. And uh, it works with them, but it's very buggy. Um, I've, I've had it crap out at numerous events. You know, I would recommend using it because it's very easy and user friendly and it syncs right with iTunes. But unless the developers are willing to squash some of the bugs for PC at some point in time, which, you know, they've just been unwilling to do it so far, I can't recommend that software. Um, I also did like, um, I think it's Cross DJ. Hang on, let me check really fast here. Yeah, I do have Cross DJ 3.43, which I think, you know, as of installing it on my computer is the latest version. 
I actually really did like the layout, but the auto mixing functionality wasn't quite there. And that's another software where I just, I don't feel like they're updating it. Uh, I feel like it's just kind of slowly aging out. And maybe at some point, maybe they're working on an update, but when you touch it, it, it just, it feels like dated software, and I just wouldn't recommend that either. But, you know, PC DJ Dex 3 is pretty good. It's really good on the karaoke end. Not really recommended on the DJ end from me, but for karaoke, it's probably the best software you can get. Virtual DJ 8, I wasn't a big fan of it. I've used Virtual DJ, I've, I've had a, a lifetime license since version 5, so I've used version 5, loved it, version 6, loved it, version 7, loved it. They did a complete redesign for version 8. And I just had a tough time transitioning from 7 to 8. I really didn't like it. I didn't really like the way that they, they built it out and the functionality. So that's why I started searching for other software. And for me, if I'm just going out to DJ, I use Rekordbox with my Pioneer controller. If I'm doing karaoke, I use PC DJ Dex 3 because it has excellent karaoke support. Not the best if you're just going out to straight DJ. But like I said, DJ software controllers are very, very much su subject to user preference. So keep an open mind. The XDJ RX with, with the uh, Record Box DJ is what I recommend. It's what I use, and it does make an excellent backup system. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them down in the comments section. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video where we are going to talk about speakers. Have a good day.